So in this quick tutorial, we're gonna have a look at Photoshop's Puppet Warp Tool. Let's get into it. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna use this portrait here that I took of my friend, Victoria. And now the Puppet Warp Tool, it's very, very similar in some ways to Photoshop's Liquify Tool. If you've ever used that before, uh, you'll understand the principle of potentially what we're gonna be doing here. If you've not used it at all, there is a fantastic demonstration uh, and a bigger tutorial about the Liquify Tool in iPhotography's Portrait course, if you wanna have a look at that. But just to give you a bit of an overview as to how the Puppet Tool works, we have to unlock the background. Now, if we don't already have our image set as a separate layer, we need to be able to make sure it's editable and locked background layers or locked layers aren't editable in, for the Puppet Warp tool. So we need to basically press on this little padlock icon at the side here. So now it's a document that we can kind of move around within its frame, etc. And now our Puppet Warp tool is up here in the edit menu bar. So we go edit and come down to Puppet Warp. Now what it gives us straight away is like a graph, a, a mesh effectively as Photoshop calls it. And this is mapping out all the contour points in the image that it can potentially render. Now what we've got the option of here is with our little um, drawing pin icon is that we can set pins in place effectively. So we can just press on these different markers and these are just the different cross points in the image. Now we can actually change the amount of uh, this kind of mesh or this graph that's taking place here. We can add fewer points, we can make it a little bit more detailed. So it just really depends upon the image that you're working on as to how much finite movement and how much change you want to actually make to the shape of your subject there. You can also hide the actual mesh if it's becoming a little bit tricky for you to see, uh, but sometimes it's actually quite easy to work with it on to begin with. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm just gonna set a few points around our subject here, around the edges, around the arms. And now what it gives us the option of doing is that if we go back to one of the points around the arm on this side, is that we can actually push by holding down on the mouse, we can push left and right, and we can actually change in this instance the, the contour and the, and the shape and the width of the body parts. Now, sometimes with limbs, we can move these left and right a little bit more. So we can actually change an arm that's pointed upwards like this to be a little bit more angled. We can make parts of the body look a little bit narrower. We can make it look a little bit wider. It's parts of these are techniques that fashion photographers and magazine photographers do a lot when they're airbrushing or retouching subjects. So it's up to you as to how much you agree with this necessarily, but it can just be used just sometimes for a bit of fun in a photograph. It can be really, really helpful if you're wanting someone to look a little bit more muscular, for example, uh, in a photograph as well. So there's loads of different applications for it, but simply all we need to carry on doing is just pressing down and selecting different areas with our drawing pin. And then we can then move those points around a little bit, change the shape of the body. We can maybe press one by the hat, make it look a little bit narrower. If we wanted to reduce the height of the hat to make it not look so tall, we can push a couple of points up there. So there's loads of different applications, as I say, you can apply for this. If you're photographing fruit, for example, and there's maybe it's maybe not kind of perfectly shaped, there's maybe some bumps and bruises on it, you can use the Puppet Warp tool just to select areas and just narrow it and make it look a little bit more conventional in terms of its shape. It's completely up to you as to how it's played around with, but it's a very, very useful tool for making images look a little bit more dramatic maybe just kind of filling them out or doing things that you wouldn't necessarily have been able to do in camera with your subject. So it's very, very useful to play around. Definitely have a go with it. Once you're finished with it, you can then just simply press the tick button at the top and all the changes that you've then made have been instantly applied. We can go back to our original so we can just have a quick look as to where we were before. So we've gone from there and we just add a little bit more definition in terms of the arms and here, the body. We've made things a little bit more curved around the side of the other arm. We've reduced the height of the hat slightly. So it can be really, really kind of creative. It's totally down to yourself, as I say, how this is actually applied. But it's one tool that I think is very, very underused in Photoshop. But it's very, very useful just for refining shapes of subjects. So that's the Puppet Warp tool. And I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, check out iPhotography for more. Thanks for watching.